Hey folks, it is Wednesday and that means Ask a Flower Farmer um, Day. And I'm your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and thanks so much for joining me here today. So I have some things I wanna share with you, um, but I also wanna get to all of our questions. So just remember that if you want me to answer a question, post it down in the little bubble down below where the question mark is, um, because that way I don't have to scroll through everybody's names and miss your question, right? So be sure that you post down there, and I have so many things I wanna to talk to y'all about. Um, first off, um, you know, I'm standing here in front of the row covers, and this is just one of the perfect examples. I'm just telling to people, you need to plan way ahead in getting your orders and your supplies it doesn't matter what it is, whether you're talking about Christmas presents, clothing, shoes, gardening supplies, farming supplies, seeds, whatever it is, because stuff is happening. So for our row covers, they were actually, the company that uh, makes them was actually in one of the hurricane hits down in Louisiana. That screwed up that whole distribution, right? Um, you have to count on the fact that it's taken a lot longer to get everything for a bunch of different reasons. It's not just lack of truck drivers, lack of product, lack of everything. And I'm saying this because we know the phone calls will be coming in December of people freaking out, not being able to get their stuff. Um, so, and here's another one, you know, like green zinnias, right? I mean, Benary's Giant Lime Green Zinnias is one of our very top sellers. Are we afraid? Yes, we always are. Will we have enough to restock? Um, so we're sitting fat and happy right now, but that does not mean in February when everybody's buying seeds for the spring, will we have those? So I'm just giving a little flair that you need to be thinking ahead. You should be ordering your spring seeds now, y'all, um, and, and your supplies. And that's a real, I just got a call from our importer. Um, the, the invoice says it'll take 20 days for our soil blockers to get here. Guess what she told me? Eight weeks, you know? And if she says eight, I bet it'll take 12. So I just don't want anybody to be disappointed. Um, and so, you know, remember, whenever you order from us, we send lots of swag. We have note cut. If you order um, just seeds, they'll probably slip one of these. These are sticky notes. We always try to give y'all a pen, and if you have a box order, you might even get one of our cups. So we just love sharing our swag with you guys. Um, and then I have one last thing I wanna tell you guys about, and then we're gonna jump onto questions. I see we have a couple. Um, whether you know it or not, um, our course, Farmer Florist School, The Wedding Process, once a year enrollment opens on Friday with Jenny Love. And friends, I do not want that name, the wedding process, to put you off if you're not doing weddings. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of lives Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, talking to some of her former students, going through the syllabus step by step. There's going to be a podcast posted of me and Jenny going through her syllabus. Syllabus is just the outline of the course, right? But I want to read this to you because... There is so much more. Every, any person that grows, sells, or designs with flowers has amazing benefit from this course. This is all business, y'all. It has nothing to do with design. Um, week one, our wedding's right for you. She takes you through how to do DIY buckets, bulk buckets, a la carte, full service, what's right for you? What kind of wedding, you know, person do you want to be working with freelancers? But there's just so much more, y'all. I have to skip through these. Um, the second class, you know, it's six weeks. The second week is growing and sourcing flowers for wedding and events. She first teaches you, you don't have to grow at all. She teaches you the 10 top foundational flowers to grow yourself for weddings, the top 10 foliages to grow, how to set yourself apart, crop planning for event design. Y'all, this is great, but here's the part I really wanted to get to. Class three is about finding clients. She goes into online marketing, 
each lesson, one on Instagram, one on Pinterest, one on Facebook, one on Google, one on blog, blogging, should you be involved with wedding wire and the knot. Um, what I want to say about the social media piece of this course, this portion is worthy of taking the entire course. But she goes deeper. She goes into contracts, pricing, how to figure all that out. All of this can be applied in other business areas. Um, so I just wanted to say to you guys, my Instagram people, do not be put off by weddings. Um, and I'll be live on Saturday with one of her students and then another one of her students on Sunday, I think. Saturday. Saturday and Tuesday, I'm sorry. Um, so check it out. Go to our website thegardenersworkshop.com and you can learn more about her course. <laughs> yes, everything is fine. Thank you for asking. If you use Weed Guard, should we still add mulch for warmth or will the black color warm be better? So you're talking about black landscape cloth. And, um, I mean, we, you, we don't, you, we don't grow in landscape cloth. We have used it in our pathways in certain situations. Um, but the effect is the same as our black bio 360 and, um, we don't put mulch on it. So you should be actually fine for that. I would not put mulch on top of landscape fabric. That's like making the drawbacks that we have with it. 10 times worse. So I think you're okay. It just really depends on where you are. Hi, Lisa. What tips do you have for getting eucalyptus to grow big enough to take lots of cuttings from an arrangement in a small space? Mine took most of the season to get there and they were still small on the sides. So I don't, I have never take, I've only started eucalyptus from seed. And I will tell you that eucalyptus is just a slow grower. Um, the real, what I have gathered, so I'm in zone 7B, 8A, right? And I only field grow, I don't have any hoop houses. And the only one that I've ever grown is eucalyptus silver drop. So Dave Dowling did suggest to me to try to winter it over because I'm kind of like right on that edge. So if you're like me or South, then for sure you need to do what I'm getting ready to tell you. But people in more northern regions, I know that my friend in Canada, they overwinter it in a hoop house. Um, so what I'm telling you is for 8A, 7B. Um, so Dave had me put really deep mulch. I used leaf litter about 12 inches around my plants. Um, and then I cut them back to about 12 to 18 inches tall. And then we hooped them. We double covered them with lightweight row cover. And that made them in their second year much more productive. Um, so I really don't know anything about taking cuttings. Um, we, when we're starting our seeds, we literally start those seeds in January to plant them out like in April to get them in as soon as we can to get growing. Um, so I don't know if that helps you at all, but that's what we do and what my experiences have been. Good morning. Good tips on ordering. I looked at your website for desiccant packs to put in the freezer with seeds. What size should one be for a box rough size of a shoe box or do you store these in plastic containers or cardboard boxes so no cardboard boxes um, they definitely need to be in an airtight container that's the way that the desiccants work um, you can either use a glass can you know like a glass casserole dish type of thing you know glass um, a tempered glass with the top or we use big Ziploc bags. So you put your seeds into the bag and you only need one desiccant per large um, Ziploc bag. Um, put your seeds in the bag, put the desiccant in, and then leave them sitting on a counter for at least three days so that the desiccant can actually do its work before it gets frozen. Then after three days, you toss them into the freezer or the refrigerator. And then when you're bringing them out of the freezer, it's the very same thing. Um, it is um, take them out of the freezer, lay them on the counter, let them defrost, 
and let that desiccant absorb any moisture and condensation that occurs. Um, so that is all I know about that. All right, so y'all remember to post your questions down in the bubble so I don't have to, I don't want to miss your question in the everybody's names. Sunflower, Sky Farm, compost pile, is there danger of spreading disease unknowingly? So the bottom line with that is a lot of people think just making a pile of stuff in your yard or garden is composting, but in fact, that's not really true. Um, and this is in my book, Vegetables Love Flowers. There's an area that talks about how we make compost because we do it kind of the lazy way. Um, is a compost pile needs to get up to 160 degrees for several days to kill pathogens, weed seeds, and any other creepy things. And for that to happen, a pile has to be three foot by three foot by three foot. That's like a cube, right? And so if you walk outside and look at your pile, unless your pile is enormous, you're not going to have that three foot square. That's why it's so beneficial to find some kind of structure or make something. We use straw bales. You can see all of that in Vegetables Love Flowers to hold your stuff more upright so you can create that to actually heat up to kill any disease and pathogens. Um, and I will tell you that I think that 95% of people that think they have a compost heap cooking don't really because they're piles like this, you know what I mean? They're, they're like a mound and they aren't really big enough to heat up and cook. I've planted my snaps out in the garden. Should I pinch them? Um, so we pinch it depends on where you are in your, um, how cold you get. So if you still have time before your first frost, um, when I pinch, I want my seedlings to be able to grow little sprouts before they go into winter. It just is my sign that they're still alive and healthy and they're kind of actively growing and then the cold comes and put, makes them go dormant. Um, I don't like to pinch them while it's cold and stun them. Um, so if you are already into winter, I would just wait until very, very early spring when they start growing. Um, again, to pinch, that's what we, my choice usually is if I did not pinch them in the tray, which I show that on a post I did today in Instagram that you can go and look at that. Um, let's see what this is. When adding compost such as steer, certifies weed free do you recommend to till it in the fall and apply two inches or so on top um, there are so many different ways to go about that um, you can use compost either if it is finished compost you can either incorporate it into the soil before you plant or you can use it as mulch either way is both beneficial it just depends on what style of farming you are actually practicing conventional or no-till with the blue ABC Lysianthus, how do you protect the water spots in the field? You don't. Um, I mean, you have to, they would have to be under some kind of tunnel, and that is not what I do. Um, so we went away. We love the purple, the dark blue. Um, but rain spots definitely show up and damage those blooms more than others. And so we started using, um, I think it's called blush blue and that has more of a um, smear kind of blue on white which kind of is as good in bouquets but it does not show rain damage um, we were really pleased this past year we grew the blue blush pink we always grow pink white and the roseanne green and we really got away with no rain damage um, so I don't know a way to, to do that other than just pick other colors, right? I'm planting my very first flower picking garden. I have about a thousand square feet. Would it be better to cover crop over winter or mulch and cover with weed fabric to let it cook with the good nutrients? Um, first off, we don't use weed fabric. Um, weed fabric, I would imagine you're referring to landscape fabric. Landscape fabric does not work like a silage tarp works. Silage tarps 
are plastic, heavy duty plastic, and they block moisture. Um, and that's part of cooking stuff instead of growing stuff under there. And if you use landscape fabric, water can still penetrate and will encourage particularly perennial stuff to grow. Um, again, that's a really deep subject. You can look on Vegetables Love Flowers. That's my book that's about a three season cutting garden. And I talk about that a little bit. Um, and it just really depends on how quick you want to plant in the spring. If you want to plant early in spring, um, cover cropping really doesn't usually work very well for that. Um, you know, unless you want to break your garden into two pieces. Um, part that you're going to plant early, cover crop the other half and plant that a little bit further into summer to give you time to incorporate or extinguish that cover crop. Um, my first thought would be if you are, um, I'm just thinking, you know, if you work your soil now, put down compost, if you've got had your soil test done, add any components that it tells you, add compost, um, and then silage tarp it to prevent anything from growing so you can just pull it back in spring and plant. I would do that for half and cover crop half. You can find silage tarps um, and my book on my website, thegardenersworkshop.com. I am planting my very first, oh, that was it. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm looking. Do you spray your flowers with an insecticide before delivering to florist? No, we don't even use organic pesticides at all. We haven't for probably 16 or 17 years. It is not necessary. Again, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, really shares with you how we garden and farm. The method that we follow, um, it's not necessary. Our blooms are per perhaps known for their perfection um, and because when you spray your flowers, you're killing 90% good bugs and not very many of the damaging bugs. And those bugs, in fact, don't really cause as much damage as you think. And when you stop using pesticides and allow the good bugs to take care of the bad bugs, it takes time. Um, and the book really shares all of that. So I would really encourage you to check that out. Um, but no, we do not spray anything. About preparing soil, when you prep your beds in fall, what do you use to cover them so they stay weed free? The Bio 360 leaf mulch. Um, so we actually use a bunch of different, it really depends on what's being planted there and what we have on hand. If it's, tra if it's cool flowers, we're talking about fall planting, the beds that get transplants get Bio 360 on the beds for us to plant into. I direct seed into open beds um, with no Bio 360. And then I use our garden hoe. About every 10 to 14 days, I run the hoe through those direct seeded beds to prevent weeds um, from developing. And then once it gets cold, that the hoeing stops. We mulch our pathways either with leaves in the fall, because that's what's available, or if we have to, we'll use landscape fabric in the pathways. We do not like it for a lot of reasons, um, but we will still use it in a pinch. Um, so yeah, that's what we do for that. Is mushroom compost good for cool flowers? Um, mushroom compost, um, and we like to use a lot of different types of compost that have different microorganisms in them. Um, I have heard from people that use mushroom compost over and over and over and over again that they can get buildup of certain residues that's in mushroom compost. Um, if you want to check out, I talked you know earlier about Jenny Love's course on Friday. She has a podcast called No-Till Flowers, and there's actually a podcast in there of them talking about compost. I would suggest you listen to that if you have that question. But I like to use different types of compost through the season to keep those kinds of problems from happening, right? Where can we learn more about what the nutrient levels of our sto soil should be at? I would again, um, you know, first off, get a soil test. And if you go listen to No-Till Flowers, they talk, she talks a lot about that. She talks to Ellen 
I can't pronounce Ellen's last name. Begins with a P. She is like the soil management queen. She has a great book. If you listen to the podcast that Jenny talked with her, um, I would definitely recommend her um, Ellen's book and listening to that podcast. Petal Pusher Flower Farm. Have you planted your plugs yet? Thanks for all your sharing with us. Yes. We actually, um, Christine, who is right over there, she's here on uh, at the warehouse on Wednesdays with me, but she's on the farm Monday and Thursday with me and Bobo. They planted our plug Campanula and Delphiniums on Monday. And I'll tell you what we did. We put um, on a, one some of our no-till beds in the back garden. We laid down um, some Bio 360. We topped it with malt, very fine mulch. We normally would have used compost, but compost is not available where we are. Another one of those things, y'all, you've got to think a season ahead, and you better believe the minute they say it's available, I'm getting multiple dump truck loads full to stockpile because you just, everything is, and you just have to, this is just the way things are right now, right? So we planted those. Um, into beds, we put the Bio 360, put just a couple of inches or less of the mulch, and then they planted our plugs of the Delphinium Pacific Giants and Campanula Champion um, through that. Our Lysianthus plugs have not been planted yet. I don't think they'll get planted tomorrow either, probably Monday. We're still too wet to get into that area of the garden. Um, but yeah, thanks for asking about that. So it looks like I've answered all of those questions. So I just want to um, jump back in and say that perhaps one of the biggest frustrations I see people going through right now is talking about how their seed orders are late or they and and they're late because the grower ordered them too late because here's the thing and this is one reason I stood over here in front of um, these are our 50 foot row covers we have them in 250 feet and 500 foot rolls also is the next thing that we're going to be hearing from people is they'll be ordering hoops and row covers and because we know that all delivery service UPS FedEx and the U United States Post Office have warned everybody customers and merchants that it's going to be like pouring concrete into the system now until January because of the holiday shopping so if you need row cover and hoops and weight bags, hop to it, y'all. You need to get them long before you need them. Um, because let me tell you, it, there is nothing worse than not thinking ahead, having a, you know, some polar vortex coming out of the blue, and you don't have your row cover because you're going down lower than you've ever gone before. And these things happen. We hear these stories. So I just really want to encourage people it's kind of like you've got to go from being the shopper to being the person making the bikinis. Now, we know that bikinis show up in the stores in January and February, long before most people need them, right? Well, think when those bikini makers were thinking about bikinis. I mean, a year before, right? So we have to go from being the shoppers to the people thinking, okay, we need to think way ahead of the eight ball now. And that was a really big curve for me. And I just encourage, I mean, we are in a very different time now. And a lot of the frustration that people are suffering from is um, really self-induced. <laughs> I mean, there's just no other way to say it. It happens to us. We now order and sit on so much product, y'all. You just can't even believe it. Those soul blockers that are coming from England that are en route to us now. I mean, I really don't think I would have probably in old times ordered that until March of next year. But we have to think that far ahead. And you have to do it too. And yes, it means you have to spend money long before, um, long before you really need it. And so there's a lot of drawbacks to that. So blessings bouquet says think natural leaves and mulch instead of artificial products. 100% leaf mulch has always been, I mean, we use 
have used thousands of bags of leaves every year. That's one of the gifts of me being an urban farmer in the middle of the city. I don't have to go more than a quarter acre, I mean a quarter acre, quarter mile from my little farm to collect thousands of bags of leaves to use in our pathways. Um, and they just break down and become just such a great part of our garden because you know i just was reading somewhere somebody was talking about how slugs were just really they were having a problem well we find that the more leaf litter we use the less slug problems we have and that doesn't really make sense to most people but here's the thing when you have leaf litter in your garden like in your pathways we don't necessarily use it up on our beds because we use bio 360 and then open beds for direct seeding that is creates habitat for all those creatures that eat slugs, y'all. Um, I mean, we just really do not have any slug problems. And when we were in high production and had like 40, I think it was 42, 120 foot cool flower beds, all of those pathways were 10 or 12 inches deep in leaves. In leaves. And I mean, we just did not have slug damage. And so, Restoring the natural order of your garden, which I'll say it again, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, is about a three-season cutting garden. It's how vegetables benefit from flowers and how to provide flowers in a three-season situation to keep the beneficial insects and pollinators coming to the garden. And we do that with a cutting garden. And so definitely the book that a lot of folks might benefit from, from not only learning about succession planting, but how I approach farming and gardening. Kind of tells my story of how I started gardening and how I got so overrun with pests that I just literally threw up my hands and stopped using everything. And I watched over a couple of years, nature just take over my garden. And the reason that happened to me was because I was a flower farmer. I had so many flowers in my garden that this natural evolution happened. And people that are just vegetable gardeners would never experience this because they don't have all these flowers blooming in their garden like I did, which is literally just rolling out the red carpet to all the beneficial creatures. And here's what, we're almost coming to the end here. And I know we have one more question. Um, you know, y'all, let's just get, let's just say there's a million different insects in the world. Less than 1% of the insects in the world are actually um, detrimental. The rest of them have a job in the process of nature and benefit us in some way. You might not think so. Like mosquitoes, people think, what do they benefit? Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of creatures that live off of eating mosquitoes. Um, so you just have to think bigger, and that's what that book really helps you to do, I think. Are there any breaks in the flower farming season, or is it really a year-round adventure? When do you start seeds for the first spring plant in January. Um, so first off, any real business um, is usually year round. I mean, at some level. So for me as a full-time, when we were a full-time high production farm, um, it was definitely 12 months. We aren't harvesting 12 months, um, but we are seed starting about, we were seed starting with cool flowers and warm flowers and um, 10 or 11 months out of the year seed starting, but it's during the downtime of winter that we do all of our planning, updating our equipment, working on our equipment, doing um, structural stuff on our farm, and in the most important thing, learning. That's why all of our online courses, with the exception of Dave Dowling's, run during winter. We know, because our instructors are farmers, that's when they're down and they have more time. Um, a lot of farmers, um, if you live in the United States, the month of January, they a lot of times will go to Mexico. Um, you know, they go to some warm area for the month. I was never able to do that because we did work year round. Um, and a lot of farmers have added value products, whether it's speaking or dried stuff, there's other things you can do. Um, so yeah, it is definitely a year round gig. So, oh, wait. 
Your books are amazing. Thank you. I've read and marked them up and shared them with friends. Such great advice and so practical. Thank you so much for that. Um, so friends, we're coming to the end of our time together and I just want to remind you. So the Facebook that I'm, I'm doing a Facebook live as always on Friday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern time on my farm page. And I'm going to be taking you inside of Jenny's course to look at the syllabus and to have a little look at one of her marketing sessions. Because I'm telling you, um, I think so many people, you just need to go to her page and you need to listen to her two-minute video about the forecast of the 2022 um season and why now is the perfect time for anybody that wants to dabble you know being a farmer florist is the highest dollar per stem you can get for your flowers um, and I'll be taking you in and looking at her syllabus I also want to remind everybody that tonight at 7 p.m. Facebook live over on my farm page we are having the round table um, tonight with the pros talking about the forecast of the 2022 season and all the business opportunities. It's going to be Jenny Love, Ellen Frost, Stephen Gretel, um, Adams, myself, and Dave Dowling. It is all people that are in the trenches. And if you are dabbling and wanting to hit the reset button, start a new business, expand your business in a different way. This is going to really be the ticket. So what I was going to say is the Facebook Live tonight and the one on Friday will be posted in YouTube if you're not a, fa a Facebook user. but And we may also post them here on Instagram, but I think YouTube everybody can get to. Um, so friends, it's time to sign off and just... I hope to see you um, Saturday on my Instagram live talking to one of Jenny's students about how the course was surprising and how it impacted her business. Um, so friends, until we meet again, I'm just trying to see if I'm forgetting anything. Ciao.